Hi, Terry Shanefeld for UAB School of Medicine. When studies are designed, researchers have to decide on the type 2 error rate and the power that they want in a study. In this video, I'll discuss what power is and how it relates to sample size. So there's some truth out there. When you look at a study, the intervention arms, that there's a difference between the arms of a study or no difference. And we do a study to estimate truth. We can never know the truth. We can only estimate truth. And our study can say there's a difference between two arms or no difference. And we're in great shape when we're in these two boxes. That our study found a difference and one truly exists. Or our study said there's no difference between the arms of a study and one doesn't really exist. The problem is when we're in these two boxes. And we make one of two errors. And I'm not going to focus on a type 1 or alpha error which goes up here. I'm only going to focus in this video on beta or type 2 errors. And a beta type 2 error occurs when a study finds no difference when in fact one truly exists. So a beta error is essentially a false negative study. So the study doesn't find a difference when in fact one truly exists. And I really think about beta type 2 errors in negative studies when I expected to see a difference. I also consider it when the findings suggest a difference but it doesn't reach statistical significance. I think about there being a beta type 2 error. And the main determinant of beta or type 2 error is a sample size. The more people you put in the study, the lower the risk of a beta or type 2 error. And by convention, when we design, design a study, we set our beta error at 10 to 20 percent. Could be less than 10 percent, but definitely no more than 20 percent. And beta error is important because it determines the power of our study. And power is the probability that our study will find a difference between those intervention arms given that one truly exists. So if you read a statistical section, you'll often see the researchers say we powered this study at 90% to find this 20% difference between two arms. That 90% means a 90% chance that that study is going to find what the researchers think it's going to find. Conversely, there's a 10% chance it won't. And power is calculated from beta error. It's 1 minus the beta error if you express beta error as a decimal, or 100% minus the beta error if you express it as a percentage. And by convention, we set power of at least 80%. Could be higher, but never lower than 80% when you design a study. So where is power on this 2x2 two two table? Well, it's right up here. It's the probability that a study will find a difference, given that one truly exists. And power is important because it helps us determine the sample size. Researchers don't just arbitrarily put a certain number of patients in a study because studies are very expensive and cumbersome to do. So you don't want to do extra work and spend extra money. So they put in the just the right number of patients they need for the study. And there's three important determinants of sample size. And one of them is power. The greater the power you want in the study, the more patients you'll need in the study. Um, less power leads to less patients. You also have to estimate a difference between the t intervention arms in your study. Sometimes this is based on previous research. Sometimes you just guess. But the smaller the, dif the difference that you anticipate, the greater the sample size. That makes sense. It's very hard to find small differences. If you expect big differences, it's much easier to find. And the third thing that we didn't talk about really in this um, lecture is the type 1 error rate. It's usually set at 0.05, but it could be set smaller. If we set at 0.01, we need a greater sample size. So these are the main three determinants of sample size. Depending on your outcome, there's another component, the variability anticipated in the measurement of each of the comparison groups. The greater the variability, the greater the sample size you need. But practically, these are the three main components of determining how many people you need to study. The power, which you expect to see difference-wise between the two groups, and the type 1 error rate. Now, this graph shows some interesting relationships related to um, power and sample size. Now, each of these colored lines um, corresponds to an effect size or the difference between the two arms of a study. So green is a smaller difference between the two arms. Blue is a big difference between the two arms. And one thing you can say, if I keep sample size the same, so 50 patients in, in the study, if I look for a bigger difference, my power goes up. It went up from, say, about 30% up to 65% or so, keeping the patients the same just by finding or looking for a bigger difference. If I keep within the same effect size or the same difference anticipated and I add more patients, my power goes up. So more patience leads to greater power in a study, the more sure you are of your answer of a study. The other thing I hope you can see from this is that there's not a linear relationship between sample size and power. It starts to level off. 
And so adding lots more patients while you do get some increases in power is really not worth the cost. So this hopefully shows you why we just don't add lots and lots of patients to studies. The incremental gains in power become small compared to the cost increases for that small incremental gain. I hope this video has helped you understand more about what power and type 2 errors are. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.